Hey you, do you know with SensePec, it's never been easier getting started with mixed reality? I'll show you. In this video, I'll be covering how to set up see-through, how to set up spatial anchors and spatial calibrations, handling spatial drift, then how I made this recording. Requirements? The Pico S version of the headset needs to be 5.7 or later. Pico Unity integration, 2.3 or later. I'm using Unity 2021.3 and Unity's XR Toolkit 2.5. Let's get started. We're starting the brand new scene. Let's go ahead and delete the main camera and create a new XR camera setup. Go to Create, XR, XR Origin. It's also good practice to add the UI event system by going to Create, XR, UI event system. Let's go click on our XR Origin here and you can see the comp component. You may want to usually want to set the camera Y offset to zero and the tracking origin mode to floor. But let me show you on the, right, in the PXR manager, it's something new. And the settings here, let's turn off mix MRC, which is mixed reality content. It's not what we're looking for here. That's for green screening the player into a game. We're working on mixed reality. And two important things here are stage mode and video see-through here. With um, stage mode, it does the tracking origin mode to floor, but also it gives you, it disables the user's ability to actually recenter so you don't mess up the environment. And the video see-through is the first step for mixed reality. And for the main camera here, we'll click on renderer. Use you high set to high fidelity. That is not what we're quite looking for here. So I'll go to project settings, we'll go to quality, and I'll switch it to performance here. Uh, it does a lot of things for you, but that's really, you know, make it easier for you guys just having the quality and performance instead of high fidelity. We're on mobile VR. And if I go to graphics here, and let's switch our render pipeline to the URP performance as well here. This automatically sets our HDR to zero, uh, off, but we go ahead and set it again. And to this thing, you can change it here. You can do MSA2, or you can just do uh, the, uh, the, the fast anti-aliasing over here. That's fine. And then environment is very important here. You want to do, uh, go ahead and turn off the HDR first. And then go to the environment background. We want to change the solid color and go to black. Zero on all, all the settings here. This will help allow us to use our video see-through. And then if you go on the left controller, right controller here, this is how you're interacting with the world. And if you go to the settings here, a brand new one, you're going to have all this information blank. So go ahead and add the prefabs. Go into our Pico integration. Go ahead and find our prefabs for the left controller, right controller. Also here, if you look at the settings here, you can't, the, everything's blank. There's no current settings here to not to get that. Let's go ahead and import our sample scene from Unity's XR Toolkit. Go to Package Manager, click on your samples, start assets, import. Let that load. Once that's loaded, you don't need to go to the sample scene, but this allows you to use the, the defaults. Here, default left, do the same thing for the default right. Great. Now, go in the XR controller, we can actually add in our controller prefabs from our Pico's um, package here. Prefab there. Add it to the model prefab. We're gonna do the same thing on the right side here. Another thing I wanna point out, here we can change the colors for our valid colors, for the line renderer from that to come in for controllers. Here, I wanted to point out here for the materials. Uh, let's just set any, we'll let's create a new folder called materials so we can start organizing from now. Uh, that's not what I want. Create folder, then materials. You're right. Once you have materials folder, go ahead and open it up and then go to create. Let's create a uh, any kind of material here. Uh, there you go. And line render. Let's not do a particle for now. Let's just set it normal. I just wanted to show you the difference here. Um, and then we're going to set this uh, new material as our default material there. I uh, can change the color. So right now, if you do the default line renderer, it won't render properly. And then, so if you do any other material, like, you know, the regular one, you can do a particle one will work too, but just, just for the sake of this conversation, let's just set it for regular. Uh, do the same thing on the right controller prefab here. And we're not gonna change the line render material on the right controller, just so you can see the difference of it not rendering properly. 
And we'll go over the settings for that later. All right, double check everything. Color, HDR is off, see-through on, tracking origin on. Now, I usually like to have all my scripts all in one area. So let's create a game object to hold my scripts. And create a folder called the scripts where I can start adding more things to it. Now for video see-through to actually work, we actually need to enable it before we do anything. Let's just make it simple. Send pack and more. Go to go to our managers here and let's create a brand new uh, game object here. Empty one is called MR. It's just going to hold our sense pack uh, MR script. Go ahead and open up their script here. Make sure we're using the correct namespace using Unity XR um, Pixar. Then in our awake method, go ahead and type in awake inside here. We're going to enable Pixar Mixed Reality dot enable see through, make sure it's true. But every single time we pause the game, take the headset off, you know, pause, press the power button to pause the game, it will actually turn off mixed reality. So in another uh, method here, we need to enable see through every time the game is no longer paused. So on application pause, this will be called every single time. When uh, the pause is not true, we want to no longer, when the pause is no longer true, we want to enable see through again. So a little note for you guys here. Go ahead and save this, close it. And let's just save this as a brand new scene. Let's just make it simple. Let's call it see through. I want to, since this is a brand new project, I want to double check our settings. See if we have the right player settings here. Go to players. Uh, name this whatever you guys want. I just like to always start my projects at 1.0. This is uh, Pico Dev Jam Team. This is fine here. Go ahead and take ARM. And minimum API level is 29. Prescripting back end, change that. ARM 64. Good. Stereo rendering, multi view. Or you can set this to 72 or 90. I like for 90. We'll just set it for 90 for now. And just make sure you enable Pico in the plugin management. That should be it. Go ahead and build. And at this point, go ahead and plug in your device. If you don't see it, your device, go ahead and plug it in, press refresh, just to see your device. As you can see here, once we're built, the see through is enabled. The right default line render isn't showing. Left one is showing. So, you know, it would be cool if we actually see more things in it. So let's go back in Unity and open it back on the script that we're working on. And so the idea now, we want to have our left trigger and right trigger uh, do an action. So let's use the Unity's input action system. You know, input action and reference. And reference to our left trigger, the right trigger. And these will allow us to, when you press a button, subscribe to the action of when you're pressing and when you're releasing different buttons for different actions. So we want to do, when you press a button, do an action. So on, let's make a new method to subscribe to that, that method and to subscribe to that uh, event. To subscribe to an input action event, your parameter has to have input action dot callback context. Do the same thing for the right trigger. And here, the subscribe to the events, left trigger dot action, and then what kind of action. We have the three actions started, performed, or canceled. Started is the first, it calls only one time when you press the button. So let's call our left trigger method here. Same thing with the right trigger dot action, started, subscribe, subscribe to it. Anything we subscribe to an event, we always have to desubscribe when we no longer need it. So either on destroy, on disable. So right now let's do on destroy. So let's desubscribe to our event. And we want to instantiate these objects, right? So let's call some blue box, blue box prefab, game object, red box prefab. Let's instantiate. New game object, new left object. We go instantiate. This helps us create our new objects with our, from our prefabs. And we want to set this somewhere. So we want to set it uh, somewhere with reference for our controller. Let's use our controller as a, a positioning. So somewhere, let's say in front of our controller. Let's call it a left spawn point. And 
right spawn point. So we're going to create these uh, game objects and use their transforms and pl place them inside our left controller, our right controller, as a child of our left and right controllers. So whatever spot that we have in front, we're just going to spawn it from there. Could turn in, we don't need to rotate or anything like that. Just make sure you have the position to be our left spawn point. Same thing for our right object, instantiate using the blue prefab, and we're doing the right spawn point position. Could turn in. The rotation of the object doesn't quite matter right now. XL set. And since we created an XR origin uh, from scratch, a new scene from scratch, we don't have input action maps set yet. Let's go ahead and do that right now. And let's create our spawn point first. Let's go ahead and Left spawn point, right spawn point, and just move it just a little bit right in front of our hands. And Z axis is forward, right? So let's set it for like 0.5, so it's not too far away. So it's somewhere in front of our hand. Uh, name it correctly. And let's go ahead and add this back to our script. Yeah, as I mentioned before, our input action manager doesn't have anything, so let's set it for the default one that comes with the sample pack here. Let's go open it back up. I named a new action map called Pico XR, and I want to create a new action, the right trigger and left triggers, right? So the binding path here, make sure you find the piece of controller uh, usages and go with trigger. Make sure it's capital T and make sure you're using usages. Left trigger, binding path, and the XR controllers here, from Pico, left, and then the uses trigger button, capital T. Go ahead and save your asset. And go ahead and click on start assets, and then you can actually use those references here. Make sure you add that back into your references that we are called from our script. Now we need to create our prefabs. And if you need to know more about input action, uh, inputs for the references. We can, I made a pre previous video. You can go check that out later for more in-depth. Okay, let's go move to, set that to blue. We don't need this too big, so 0.1 on the scale should be fine here. Oh, Clutter is fine. Add that blue material there. Let's put Control-D to clone it. And just clone the blue material called the red mat. Add that material to our red prefab. Let's make it red. A little bit high. Let's turn out the directional light. I just want to show you that lighting does affect our scene. So make sure you turn those into prefabs, make a new folder called prefab, add those that we just created into there. And then from the prefab folder that we just created, add those into the references in our script. Let's save, make sure you add our scene here, and let's build. Back in our scene, hello Toffee, that's my little mini poodle. As you can see here, that's um, little Toffee. Toffee wants some little blocks to play with, may create a little house for her. As you can hear, the blocks are actually really dark because the lighting is actually off. Make a little happy face here. You can do pretty a lot of things here, but right now, uh, since we're only using Z through adding things here, uh, things will tend to drip because we don't we're not using anchors. So let's go back, turn on our light, rebuild. Now that lighting is on, as you can see here, it's a little more shinier, a little more shinies to it. Toffee wants a little house. Let's build her a little house. All right, let's go back to Unity. Mm -hmm.